the site of Hobby Lobby. Remember, Hobby Lobby is fighting this abortion mandate in Obamacare, saying we're not going to do it. Uh, we run this business according to our sincerely held religious convictions. That's why we close every Sunday. We put it right on the doors of our stores that we're closing on Sunday to allow our employees time for worship and to spend time with their families. And this guy says, look, they're right. This is the L.A. Times. They're right. This is classic American tradition, the protection of religious liberty, deeply rooted in America's history and tradition. So an odd place to find support for Hobby Lobby in the L.A. Times. New York Times piece yesterday, Gail Collins, talking about the fact that the American Family Association and Bill O'Reilly, and she gives us first billing, uh, we are the ones that are leading the fight in the war on Christmas. And, I, and again, I call this not the war on Christmas, but it's a war on Christ. Why do secular theocrats uh, try to get rid of the word Christmas? Well, because of the first six letters of that word. That's the only reason. Because Christmas is about who? It's about Jesus Christ. So secular theocrats, they want to purge the public square of all mentions of Christ and God and Christianity. That's why they uh, are uh, against it. Now, um... <laughs> on the religious liberty front, did you know that up until this week, members of the House of Representatives were not allowed to say Merry Christmas in any communications with their constituents? That was against House rules. They've just loosened it now where you can say Merry Christmas in communication with your constituents as long as that is not the sole purpose of the card that you send out. And then this absurdity from Frisco, Texas, uh, they've got a school there that has not only banned uh, Christmas trees in, in the school property, they will not even allow students to make any reference to Christmas at their winter party, quote, end quote, and they can't even wear red or green to this winter party. Not a Christmas party, it's a winter party. And, of course, we've talked about this before. It's simply absurd. These students cannot possibly violate the First Amendment for the simple reason that they are not Congress. Congress controls only, or the First Amendment controls only the actions, restrains only the actions of Congress. Students, schools are not Congress. Now, looking at the Word of God in uh, Revelation 7 today, and again, remember what we're reading here is John is receiving a revelation from Jesus Christ about the nature of human history from 100 A.D. until the time he returns. I don't think you can allocate the bulk of these visions, these revelations, to any one specific time in history or even to any one specific event because Jesus is talking about the pattern of history from the time of that he wrote the book of Revelation until Jesus returns, the things that must take place after this, after uh, 100 A.D. Now, in Revelation chapter 7, this is where John sees four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth that no wind might blow on the earth or sea or against any tree. So these angels are holding back these hurricane force winds so there would be no destruction. And, this, and then he saw another angel from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God. So here's an angel that comes with the seal, like the signet ring of the living God, and he can mark out those who belong to him. And he called to the four angels who have been given power to harm earth and sea. That's those four angels holding back the winds, the four corners of the earth. If they ever let go, then the earth will be destroyed by these winds. And this angel with the seal of God says, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. Remember, you've got the mark of the beast on the hand and the forehead. This is the mark of God on the forehead, and he seals them, 144,000, first of all, uh, from every tribe of the sons of Israel. Now, this is a limited number in the first eight verses, 144,000. I think John's point is not so much that this number specifically is going to be 144,000, but that the number of Jewish converts, the number of Jews who would bear the seal of Christ belonging to Almighty God would be a limited number until the very end. Because in verse 9, John, after this he looks, and beholds a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, 
standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes to symbolize the righteousness of Christ with palm branches in their hands, just like those that were waved when Jesus made the triumphal entry. And this is what they cry out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And they are described in verse 14. These are the ones coming out of, notice the uh, present tense there, these are the ones who are coming out of the great tribulation. That is the tribulation that will be the experience of mankind from 100 A.D. till Jesus returns. The great tribulation, I don't think here refers to the last seven years of earthly history. This great tribulation is the entire period from 100 A.D. till Jesus comes back and sets things right. And there's this constant stream of people coming out of this time of tribulation who are washing their robes, making them white in the blood of the Lamb, and they worship God before the throne. So vast number of Gentiles, limited number of Jews until the very end. Well, let's go to prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray to you today as the one who sits on the throne, and we pray that you will put your seal on our foreheads as your servants. May we wash our robes and make them white in the blood of the Lamb. I pray that each of us will be a part of the great multitude that no one can count who will stand before your throne and in front of the Lamb. We cry out in a loud voice that salvation belongs to you, the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. We fall on our faces and worship you, and we give you praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength forever and ever. I pray that we will serve before your throne night and day in your unseen temple. As we serve you, I ask you to bring us out of every tribulation and spread your tent over us that we may never hunger for true food or thirst again for living water. Protect us from the scorching heat of the sun. Wipe away every tear from our eyes. Amen. Looking out over the old city of Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives,